This video is part one of two about the half ball hit at pool. What is so special about the half ball hit that it deserves this level of attention? Is it that it is the, the hit or the overlap that neatly cuts the cue ball in half like this? Or the hit or the overlap that neatly cuts the object ball in half like this? Or is there something more to the half ball hit than merely being the 50 yard line or the continental divide between thick and thin for cut shots at pool? Well, there is more to the half ball hit uh, than, than this, quite a bit more. Uh, but there's nothing really new in this video. Much of this has been known for an awful long time and can be found in Burns's books, uh, some of it in Amateur Physics for the Amateur Pool Player by Ron Shepard. And virtually everything I talk about here is in, in an excellent series of articles written by Bob Jewett of the San Francisco uh, Billiard Academy. Some people think the cut angle for a half ball hit is 45 degrees, but it isn't. Uh, neglecting object ball throw, it's 30 degrees. So what I'm going to describe here is four pieces of information that I'll call gems about the half ball hit that I think are useful to know and I think are helpful to your game. I'll describe the first two in part one and the second two in part two of, of this video. And I'm going to leave for last the one that I think is actually most important and least appreciated of the four. So the first gem is that the half ball hit is the only cut shot uh, with a clear aim point. Think about this for a minute. You're, to aim a half ball hit, you look directly over top of the cue ball, over top of the stick, and you aim perfectly for the edge of the object ball. And every time you aim for the edge of the object ball like this, the object ball goes off at the exact same angle. And that angle, which I called 30 degrees just a minute ago, is actually a little bit less than that because of friction between the cue ball and the object ball. It's about 28 degrees. You should remember this angle. You should learn to recognize this angle. When I say remember this angle, I don't mean think about trigonometry or remember numbers or anything like that. I mean learn to recognize what this angle looks like on a pool table. There's other places in your life where you recognize uh, angles, whether you know it or not. Here's an example of a staircase. A typical staircase has a rise of six and a half or seven inches on each step and a run of ten and a half or eleven inches on each step. Uh, so this makes an angle of about 33, give or take a few degrees, uh, from the horizontal. And you recognize this angle. You've seen it so many times. If you walked into somebody's house and they had a staircase that went up at 40 degrees from the horizontal, it would look wrong to you. It would look steep because you, you have this angle ingrained into your head. You need to learn uh, about the half ball hit angle in a simil similar way. So let me show you several examples of half ball hits. Here's a half ball hit down uh, into the corner pocket, a half ball hit into the side pocket, a half ball hit up past the side pocket into the corner, uh, down the short rail, a half ball spot shot, uh, a half ball hit back cut into the corner pocket, a back cut from the foot rail into the corner pocket. Here's that must make straight pool shot that you get at the end of a safety battle. And finally, here's that half ball hit uh, nine ball shot on the nine ball that your opponent just won't quite concede. You need to recognize these shots. You need to recognize these angles when you see them on the pool table. And so here is a drill to help you learn to recognize the half ball hit angle. Place a marker like a paper hole reinforcer at a random position on the table and put the object ball on top of it. Then position the cue ball uh, approximately as shown for about a half ball hit into a particular pocket. Uh, put a coin right uh, behind uh, the cue ball, at the base of the cue ball. Then execute a half ball shot, uh, and if the, the object ball misses the pocket, uh, move the cue ball sideways in the appropriate direction, uh, repositioning the coin, and repeat this until the half ball uh, hit splits the pocket. Once you get this, put the cue ball back in position and put the coin there, and walk around the table uh, looking at the half ball shot, telling, telling yourself this is the half ball angle, and then go through your pre-shot routine once again uh, and hit in the ball one more time. Repeat this uh, if you did a, a cut to the right into the pocket, repeat this for a cut to the left into the pocket, and then repeat the whole procedure for different pockets. The value of this, what this allows you to do is not only to recognize a half ball shot when you see it on the pool table, but to recognize when you have a shot that, sh that is a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner than a half ball shot. And then whatever mechanism you use to aim the shot, when you get down into position, you should know my, my overlap should be a little bit thicker than a half ball overlap or a little bit thinner than a half ball overlap. It's a, it's a double check on whatever technique you use to aim. So that's the object ball. What about the cue ball? Uh, there's a much bigger variety to the path that the cue ball can take in a half ball hit. 
depending upon whether it has forward spin or no spin or back spin when it strikes the object ball. Uh, if the cue ball slides into the object ball as in a stun shot, then as usual, the cue ball goes off along the tangent direction perpendicular to the direction of the object ball like this. But the stun situation is neither the most common nor the most important nor the most interesting uh, situation for a half ball hit. The more common, important, and interesting situation is when a cue ball rolls into the object ball, when a cue ball has natural roll uh, in a half ball hit. Uh, a natural rolling cue ball has a spin that is commensurate with its speed, so a faster rolling cue ball uh, has more spin than a slower rolling cue ball. But any of these rolling cue balls, when they strike the object ball in a half ball hit, a bunch of the speed uh, in the immediate aftermath of the collision, the forward speed is taken away, but the spin is not taken away, so the cue ball is spinning in place. It's burning rubber uh, as it's starting to go off along the tangent line, and that causes it to accelerate forward of the tangent line and, until it achieves natural roll again, and then it goes in a new direction that, for the case of a half ball hit, is about 33 degrees from the direction of, of, of the straight. Uh, if the ball, if the cue ball was rolling fast into the object ball, uh, then it might take a path like the white arrow uh, shown here. Uh, if the cue ball is rolling a little bit more slowly or the cloth is a little bit stickier, it might take this path uh, or even this path for a slow rolling cue ball. So this is the situation we'll focus on quite a bit in part two of this presentation, the case of a slow rolling uh, cue ball uh, and, and a half ball hit. Uh, but in any case, all of the skidding on the cloth, all of the burning rubber uh, occurs pretty much in this little yellowed circle area. So in the case of a sliding cue ball, uh, the cue ball takes the green uh, tangent direction. In the case of a, a rolling, naturally rolling cue ball with top spin, the cue ball goes off uh, in this uh, forward direction, uh, the, the solid white arrow here. What about for a cue ball with backspin? What, what about a person who draws the cue ball? What are the possible directions for the cue ball here? Well, it turns out that the maximum backspin uh, that most uh, humans with a good stroke uh, can get is about the equivalent of natural roll, but in the other direction. We call that reverse natural roll. So the cue ball for a, uh, with maximum backspin will go about the same angle before the tangent direction as the follow case puts you uh, uh, past the tangent direction. This leads us to the second gem about the half ball hit, and, and that is that a cue ball with maximum draw uh, will go uh, pretty much exactly sideways. Uh, this is useful to know. A cue ball with reverse natural roll will go pretty much perpendicular to the direction uh, that the cue ball was struck. Uh, after it's achieved a uh, natural roll. And this is useful to know uh, because sometimes you need to know whether it's possible to draw a cue ball in a direction uh, that, that goes backwards of this uh, angle. And you look at the overlap and if the cut is thinner than a half ball hit, then you're not going to be able to do that. So in summary for part one, the half ball hit is the only cut shot uh, at pool with a clear aim point and maximum draw when the half ball hit sends the cue ball uh, sideways perpendicular to the direction of the stick. Uh, part two uh, will introduce gems three and four, and both of those uh, refer to naturally rolling cue ball uh, with the carom angle of 33 degrees that I discussed earlier. Uh, gem three will actually focus on uh, an issue that involves the path of both the cue ball and the object ball, and gem four uh, will introduce some interesting things about that 33 degree carom angle for the half ball shot. This video is part one of two about the half ball hit at pool. What is so special about the half ball hit that it deserves this level of attention? Is it that it is the, the hit or the overlap that neatly cuts the cue ball in half like this? Or the hit or the overlap that neatly cuts the object ball in half like this? Or is there something more to the half ball hit than merely being the 50 yard line or the continental divide between thick and thin for cut shots at pool? Well, there is more to the half ball hit uh, than, than this, quite a bit more. Uh, but there's nothing really new in this video. Much of this has been known for an awful long time and can be found in Burns's books, uh, some of it in Amateur Physics for the Amateur Pool Player by Ron Shepard, and virtually everything I talk about here is in, in an excellent series of articles written by Bob Jewett of the San Francisco uh, Billiard Academy. Some people think the cut angle for a half ball hit is 45 degrees, but it isn't. Uh, neglecting object ball throw, it's 30 degrees. 
So what I'm going to describe here is four pieces of information that I'll call gems about the half ball hit that I think are useful to know and I think are 